Okay, welcome to the Read Aloud for April 2nd, day 17. Let's see where we were. We're getting pretty far. We're going to finish this before we know it. My debts have been paid. You are not the caretaker. My authority is the same as my husband's. In his absence, I am indeed the caretaker. I invite you to leave and never return. Mario turned and began tromping away. Where I go is my business. She did not look back. Not on my preserve. Your preserve, is it? I object to your claims of ownership. Muriel still had not looked back. Grandma started walking after her, an old woman in a bathrobe trailing an old woman dressed in rags. New crimes will entail new punishments, Grandma warned. You might be surprised who administers the penalties. Don't provoke new enmity. Depart in peace. Grandma quickened her pace and caught hold of Muriel by the upper arm. Muriel twisted free, turning to face Grandma. Tread lightly, Ruth. If you seek trouble here and now in front of little ones, I will oblige you. This is the wrong moment to cling to antiquated protocol. Things have changed more than you realize. I suggest you depart before I regain authority here. Seth ran toward them. Grandma took a step back. Seth flung a handful of salt at the witch. It had no effect. Muriel pointed at him. You rec your recompense is coming, my bold little whelp. I have a long memory. Your actions require retribution, retribution, Grandma warned. Muriel was striding away again. You speak to deaf ears. You said you'd tell us how to find our Grandpa, Kendra called. Muriel laughed without looking back. Hold your tongues, children, Grandma said. Muriel, I have commanded you to depart. Your defiance is an act of war. You issue evictions in order to build a case for wrongdoing and thereby justify retaliation, Muriel said. I do not fear a feud with you. Grandma turned away from Muriel. Kendra, come here. Grandma pulled Seth to her in a tight hug. When Kendra drew near, she embraced her as well. I am sorry for misleading you, children. I should not have guided you to Muriel. I did not realize this was her final knot. What do you mean, Kendra said. You heard us talking. Grandma smiled sadly. As a chicken, thinking clearly becomes an exhausting challenge. My mind was in a haze. To interact with you like a person, even for a moment, requires tremendous concentration. Seth nodded toward Muriel. Should we stop her? I bet the three of us could take her. If we attack, she will be able to defend herself with magic, Grandma said. We would forfeit the protection afforded by the foundational covenants of the treaty. Have we messed things up? Seth asked, setting her free, I mean. Things were already dismal, Grandma said. Having her on the loose certainly complicates the situation. Whether my assistance can compensate for her interference remains to be seen. Grandma looked flushed. She fanned her face. Your grandfather left us in quite a predicament. It wasn't his fault, Seth said. Grandma bent over, placing her hands on her knees. Kendra steadied her. I'm all right, Kendra. Just a little woozy. She stood up experimentally. Tell me what happened. I know, un I know undesirable beings entered the house and took Stan. They took Lena, too, and I think they turned Dale into a statue, Kendra reported. We found him in the yard. Gam Grandma nodded. As caretaker, Stan is a valuable trophy. Same with the fallen nymph. By contrast, Dale seemed unimpressive and was left behind. Any clues who took them? We found some footprints near Dale, Seth said. Did they lead you anywhere? No, Seth said. Have you any idea where Grandpa and Lena are being held? No. Muriel probably knows, Grandma said. She has an alliance with the imps. Speaking of Muriel, Kendra said, where did she go? They all looked around. Muriel was no longer in sight. Grandma frowned. She must have special means of hiding or traveling. No matter, we aren't equipped to deal with her now. What do we do? Seth asked. Our first order of business is to find your grandpa. Learning his location should dictate how we best proceed. How do we do that? Grandma sighed. Our nearest option would be Nero. Who? Kendra said. A cliff troll. He has a seeing stone. If we can successfully bargain with him, we should be able to reveal Stan's location. How do you know him? Do you know him well? Seth asked. 
Never met him. Your grandfather had dealings with him once. It will be dangerous, but at present he is probably our best alternative. We should hurry. I'll tell you more on the way. Chapter 14. Trolling for Grandpa. Have you ever heard people conversing while you're falling asleep, Grandma said? The words reach you from a distance and you can barely glimpse the meaning. That happened to me in a motel once when we were on a trip, Kendra said. Mom and Dad were talking. I fell asleep and their conversation turned into a dream. Then, to some degree, you can grasp my state of mind as a chicken. To say it is June, my last clear memories are from February, when the spell was enacted. From the, for the first couple of days, I remained fairly alert. Over time, I lapsed into a twilight consciousness, incapable of rational thought, unable to interpret my surroundings as a human would. Weird, Seth said. I recognized, you, I recognized you kids when you arrived, but it was through a clouded lens. My mind did not reawaken until you let those creatures in through the window. The shock jolted me out of my stupor. It was a struggle to cling to my elevated consciousness. I cannot describe my concentration, the concentration it required to write that message to you. My mind wanted to slip away, to relax. I wanted to eat the delicious kernels, not arrange them in bizarre patterns. They traveled along a wide dirt road. Rather than head back toward the house, they had continued on the trail but beyond the ivy shack, venturing deeper into the forest. The trail had eventually forked and they intersect the road they were currently following. The sun blazed overhead and the air was heavy and humid, and the forest remained unnaturally silent all around them. Kendra and Seth had brought a pair of jeans, but they turned out to be from Grandma's skinnier days and were not even close to fitting. The tennis shoes belonged to Grandpa and were several sizes too big, so Grandma now wore a bathing suit under her robe and her feet remained in slippers. Grandpa, Grandma raised her hands, staring as she opened and closed them. Strange to have proper fingers again, she murmured. How did you become a chicken in the first place, Seth asked. Pride made me careless, Grandma said, a sober reminder that none of us are immune to the dangers here, even when we imagine we have the upper hand. Let's save the details for another time. Why didn't Grandpa change you back, Kendra asked. Grandma's eyebrows shot up, probably because I kept laying eggs for his breakfast. I like to think that if he had taken me to Muriel in the first place, I could have prevented all this nonsense from happening. <coughs> but I suppose... <clears throat> but I suppose he was searching for an alternative cure for my condition. Besides asking Muriel, Seth asked. Exactly. Then why did he have Muriel cure me? I'm sure he knew your parents would return soon, leaving insufficient time to discover another remedy. You had no idea Seth had become a mutant walrus and, and had been restored by Muriel, Kendra said. I missed all of that, Grandpa, Grandma said. As a hen, most details escaped me. When I urged you to take me to Muriel, I assumed she still had two knots remaining. Only when I looked up and observed the single knot did I begin to fathom the actual predicament. By then it was too late. Incidentally, how did you end up as a walrus? Seth and Kendra related the particulars about turning the fairy into an imp and the subsequent retribution. Grandma listened, asking a few clarifying questions. As the path curved around a tall thicket, a covered bridge came into view up ahead. Spanning a ravine, the bridge was composed of dark wood, although aged and weathered, it appeared to be in reasonably good repair. Our destination draws near, Kendra said. Beyond the bridge? Or Grandma said. Beyond the bridge, Kendra asked. Down in the ravine. Grandma stopped, studying the foliage off to either side of the road. I am suspicious of the stillness in the woods. A great tension rests upon Fablehaven today. She resumed walking. Okay, we'll read more tomorrow.